you want to see how I prepared this delicious vegetable soup. Come with me on a vegetable soup cooking adventure. This is going to be a very slow video. A special video for those who want to see every single detail. It's for those who want to hear me think aloud when cooking. If you want this video faster, do you know that you can watch videos at two times the speed on YouTube? That's how I save time watching YouTube videos without missing a thing in the video. First of all, we need fresh meat for the most delicious vegetable soup or any Nigerian soup for that matter. You need fresh meat. So I like to buy the meat on the day I'll cook the soup. So I've shown this market before in another vlog. I've shown it in full. Today, I don't know if I'll show it in full. I don't have the time. I need to be fast and go out before the, they start charging for parking. You can call it fresh meat. I guess they slaughtered the meat yesterday. And then this morning, you can buy it fresh, fresh, fresh. They start early in the morning. One of the few places where you can buy something as early as 7 a.m. in Spain. Usually they open their shops by 10 a.m. Here they open shops at 10 a.m. Close for siesta at 2 p.m. Reopen at 5 p.m. Then close again at 8 p.m. These are like the street shops, the small corner shops. The supermarkets, some of the supermarkets used to do like that. <laughs> in fact, some of them stopped after I have arrived in Spain. <laughs> Yeah, only recently. Then a lot of the supermarkets used to open at 10 a.m. and close at 10 p.m. But now they are opening earlier, 9 a.m. In this city where I live, we don't have even a single 24-hour shop. <laughs> like in the UK or US, you now have 24-hour service. No, not here. Hola, guapos. Bien, y tú? Bien. Buenos días. Quiero costillas. Tenéis. No hay. Muy tierno. Muy tierno. Tiernísimo. Tiernísimo. Eso. Sin grasa, ¿no? Sin grasa. Eso es lo que quiero, ¿eh? Gracias, cariño. <laughs> I like cooking vegetable soup with costillas. In fact, every Nigerian soup, this part of meat, the ribs, tastes so good in Nigerian soup. But it contains a lot of oil, so if you're watching the oil in your meals maybe you should stay away from this meat of course it's the oil that makes it taste good <laughs> hey i'll also be using other parts of beef to go with the ribs well more that's cow skin and shaki that is cow tribe. I cut them into small pieces. In Nigeria, we also add periwinkles. So if you have that, add those too. I'll also be using stuffed fish. I'll be using frozen spinach. Yesterday evening, I brought out the frozen spinach to defrost. It is best to leave them to defrost on their own rather than with a microwave oven. If you live in Spain, Mercadona supermarket sells the best frozen spinach. I'll also be using this leaf, canonigos in Spanish, known as lamb's lettuce in English. It adds a good taste to the soup and helps bind the spinach. Sort of the same job that water leaves do in the classic Nigerian vegetable soup. You need onions, lots of onions. This is sweet pepper. It's not spicy at all. I use it to add some color to the soup, else it will be green green everywhere. I don't add a lot, just enough for some red color to be peeking out here and there. The same effect you get with adding lots of habanero peppers, but in this house we don't eat lots of spicy pepper, so I use this one to fake it. <laughs> I add some spicy habanero peppers, the quantity we can <laughs> we can bear <laughs> or we can withstand. I'll talk about other ingredients as we go along. So that's the ribs in the pot. 
do, do, do. onions like i said you need plenty onions to mask the taste of the spinach spinach has a very strong taste then season it using no cubes i add a little bit more than i would normally add because be honest if you don't do that this soup will be tasteless spinach is a vegetable that has a very strong taste Ugh. especially this frozen spinach this frozen spinach it, there's a lot of spinach in one small space because it's compact so you need to be careful you can crush it if you want but this thing is usually very strong Ugh. no need pressure cooker would crush everything Chucky and Pomo. I cook everything in one pot because they all have the same cooking times as far as the pressure cooker goes. At least my pressure cooker. I know how to set the time for it. Um, the stock fish. The stock fish, I, I don't bother soaking it because it will be softened in the pot. When it softens, I will break it into pieces to the size I want. You can see the quantity of water I added. Add enough per the specifications of your pressure pot. I will need to add a little bit more. For this soup, you need as little water as possible. In fact, there shouldn't be water. In fact, let's just keep cooking. You will see what I will do. If you brought out the frozen spinach the day before, by now it should have thawed completely. All that water came from these two packets. Pour them in the sieve so that more water can seep out. Then I pick the lamb's lettuce. This vegetable is usually packed with the roots, so I meticulously cut off the roots. and slice them at the same time it's got some slip to it so slicing them this way is more efficient for me this is the spinach you see how much more water still came out of it in spite of the earlier one this is new one since i put it in the sieve They are quite small, but like these ones, I like cutting them. With a very sharp knife, I'm going to cut them into even smaller pieces. The best time to do this cutting is when it's um, a little bit still frozen, like it has started defrosting, maybe halfway fully defrosted. If you can catch it at that time, that's the best time to cut it. But uh, that happened sometime in the middle of the night because I brought this out last night. So yeah, I'm going to do it now to make it even smaller so that the soup will look better. I don't know, it's much better for the soup than having... You may have long strand of vegetables in here, so that's why I cut it. So, that's how I do. I just find the small, small ones. And this one is quite small, so I can leave it. But if I have the time and the energy, <laughs> I'll cut them. I used to add ground spinach as well. I don't add it anymore because it makes the soup mushy, which I don't like. I stopped fancying the mushiness. <laughs> so if you want it even more mushy, you can add that ground one in the mix of all these vegetables. This is the best vegetable to cook vegetable soup with. If you try to cook vegetable soup with leafy vegetable maybe leafy spinach oh my god one you need lots and lots of vegetables to make a pot of soup and then you need to blanch it kind of i've shown that in some of my videos where i cook it in another pan or pot wilt it <laughs> 
so that the water will come out and then you throw away the water and add only the vegetables because if you add the vegetables directly into the soup madre water will be everywhere and that water doesn't have a good taste no matter the kind of seasoning you add to it to the soup will not taste good so this one is like um the texture is like washed bitter leaves if you know how washed bitter leaves is so it's already kind of <laughs> it's gone through a process i don't know i don't know how to explain it but yeah And you have more vegetables per, per area. <laughs> well done now. I'll put it back in the sieve so that it will continue to drain out any water. You can also press it. For instance, if you press it, <laughs> there's so much water in this vegetable. Eh? so much water if you don't want to throw away the vitamins <laughs> yeah because some people say you're throwing away the vitamins you can take this water put it in a pot boil it down before adding it to the soup because i tell you if you add this directly to the soup the soup will be watery for a vegetable soup yeah for what we call vegetable soup in nigeria it will be watery yeah but for me <laughs> I don't care about that because spinach has a very strong taste. Madre, this vegetable has a very strong taste. So if all this spinach water goes into what I'm cooking, it will make the, the soup bland. No matter the kind of seasoning cubes you add, the number of seasoning cubes you add, that should be it. <laughs> See, it's like with a leaf water. <laughs> This one is ready to go into the pot. I'm going to wash the lamb's lettuce, canonigos in Spanish. This is my portable dustbin. <laughs> Who else does that? When I'm cooking soup or anything, when I'm doing heavy cooking, I usually need a plastic bag <laughs> by the side so that I'll be throwing all the waste there. I don't want to be going back and forth to the outside where the bin is. Yeah. If I keep doing that, I would have traveled 10,000 kilometers by the time I finish cooking the soup. But it's fresh bean. As soon as I finish cooking this soup now, I'll throw, throw it in the bin. I don't keep it here all the time, only when I'm cooking. Heavy cooking. So I'll produce a lot of waste. You hear the pressure pot going? As soon as I hear that, it means it's pressurized. I turn off the heat. I'm turning it off now. That's how I like my meat. If you want your meat softer, then you can leave it to cook for longer. I turn it off and remove it from that, the burner because I have a little ceramic cooker which has residual heat even after you've turned off the heat. So, if So if you leave it there, it will continue to soften. So I put it there, and as soon as I finish washing this, I'll depressurize it under the half. So I can leave it there to depressurize on it, so it doesn't really matter. It doesn't make much difference. Crayfish, you don't need to grind today. Palm oil is congealed <laughs> because it's winter now. Even in summer, these palm oils over here usually are congealed. So I'll melt it for a few seconds in the microwave oven. You can also melt it once when you buy the palm oil, you melt it 
then transfer it to a container that you can put a spoon into, whichever you prefer. 40 seconds. Done. But this is too much water for vegetable soup. If you use all this water to cook the soup, it will be river Niger. <laughs> You'll be cooking river Niger soup. So I'm going to remove the meat and boil it down. The first of all, let me check if the shaki is done. Not shaki. The bomo is done because this bomo is quite tough. If it's not done, I'll remove every other meat and leave the bomo then and then boil the water down. It's done. Once it boils down, the soup is ready. Then, on high heat, so that it will boil down. While that is boiling, I'll break the stock fish into small pieces and remove the bone. Remove the bone. Break it into small pieces, as small as you want them, really. There is no... With Nigerian cooking, to be honest, once you get the ingredients, you can do anything you want with them. <laughs> Just don't blend them. <laughs> You don't have to use all the meat and fish I used. You can use only one type of meat. As your pocket and as your taste allows. Ready to go back into the pot. It has boiled down considerably. Look at that. I'm going to add palm oil. This one is almost finished. So. For vegetable soup, I add a lot of palm oil. <laughs> you just can't do otherwise. In authentic vegetable soup, to be honest, the only liquid in the soup is oil. Oh yeah, oil. Oh yeah, oil. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> That's the only liquid in the soup. Add crayfish. I don't usually dis use this pot to cook soup. Oh. I completely forgot. Let's see my pot of soup here. That I got ready to use that I completely forgot. Wait for it to boil for about seven. I don't know, you're not seeing my face. Wait for it to boil for about seven minutes, you know. Palm oil has its own taste. Raw palm oil is a thing. Like when you eat it on our mama no, it will be sticky. So when you add palm oil to a soup or anything, it's good to cook it for some time so that it will be integrated into the soup. I don't know if that happens to any other person. If I add palm oil too late to a pot of soup, I will know when you're eating it, it will be... No, I don't like that. <laughs> Okay. 
And you see the pot. Add the peppers, add the lamb's lettuce. I like this vegetable to cook for some time so that it integrates well in the soup. Add the stockfish. and the meats. This one already looks like soup. <laughs> it already looks like soup on its own. <laughs> No, not yet. Not yet. It will be a different kind of soup. I don't know what we call it. Meat soup. I have to use this burner because this pot is quite wide. This burner here doesn't match it, so that's why I have to use this one. If not, I would have used this one here, where well, you can see it better. I don't think you guys have seen this thing well. Let me try and take you right inside the pot. You see that there's no, there's no more, there's no water. Actually, no water in the pot. You have enough soup water <laughs> to eat the food. So that it can send down the ball of semo without resistance. Add salt. Once it boils again, it's done. I know some people will say that I cooked this spinach too much. Not at all. You can see that it is still very green. Any cooking time less than this, the soup will taste like grass. <laughs> Feel free to add it, stir and take it off the stove if that's the way you like it. Keep your eye on the color. As long as it is still green, it's not overcooked. This is how we like it. I prefer soups palatable in the mouth, supple if you will, you know, all the ingredients have mingled well, come together to actually form the soup. Once it's done, you transfer it to a cold container immediately. Yeah, I know I'm using plastic, but yeah, that's what I have. Uh -oh. Transfer it immediately so that it doesn't change color. If not, it will turn dark and dead. <laughs> Turn it into a container immediately, immediately. I also keep it on the tile, on the floor, because it helps it cool down quicker. Look at them chilling on the floor 
once it cools down completely i'll put it in the freezer for my family to enjoy when i am away you guys have been asking for a live cooking video i hope you enjoyed this live like cook with me please give the video a like if you did bye bye see you